Hey, what's up guys? Here's the full overview of the Wonderland Dreams. Uh, it's probably gonna be a playlist. You can start with this video, I guess, or you can end with this video. Whichever way I put it, it's gonna be the way I put it. And here's a quick preview of like everything. Oh, not that one. Right here. So, okay. That's the TLDR. There's definitely some things that uh, need to be, you know, moved around. But for this specific video, I'm gonna do an overview and for the most part, I'm just gonna cover the stuff that I think that's kind of broken or playable that you wanna pay attention to. Everything else you can kind of more or less just throw out the, the, the bag, whatever, right? And if there's a legendary that I missed synergy for or something like that, um, it's probably just missing, you know what I mean? But okay, let's check it out. So first of all, we're gonna cover just the real quicks, right? I think that Emeralda here, Emeralda here, super strong. Probably the, the like one of the best, not the best, you know, but like one of the best things that Blood has coming for it, right? So Emeralda, too strong, too good. Spawn of the Abyss, right? Too good as well. It's like guaranteed damage. Karabos, super interesting win condition. And this is just strong, right? We're gonna move through this real quick. Jabberwock, Worm God of the Skies, tilting at windmills, you know? The Worm God, specifically with the neutral, uh, the other neutral legendary, super strong. Keep moving. We got Fairy Dragon here, looks super good. Beauty and the Beast is kind of iffy or whatever, but good enough. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Forest is not exactly in the greatest shape, in my opinion. Haven, okay. So, Odette, I don't think should really be here. I think that line of the Golden City and Eagle Man, and I guess, or everything down here should actually be, or, well, maybe not Princess Snow White. But these three right here, line of the Golden City, Eagle Man, and, uh, Nail Red Branch Knight is what you really want to focus on. Those are really cool looking ideas for cards. Tenko's really cool too for uh, Lana Haven. Along with, I guess, Monk of the Purification, but whatever. Okay, so here we got Heiner blah 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 blah, the dude. We'll see him in a bit. And Wiz Wizardess of Oz, right? Those two cards are super cool. I'm thinking that neutral rune without spells is definitely gonna be a thing. And there's gonna be neutral rune with spells, but I don't know, those are really cool. The Abomination Awakened here shouldn't actually be in memes. I think it should definitely be between playable and high play. Because I didn't realize that after you evolve it, it can attack. I thought it still can't attack for some reason. But yeah, I thought it can only attack with nine nine cards. And I was like, that's way too difficult to proc, right? But this is good. This is strong. Six, three play point, six, six. It's almost like a four, four when you evolve, right? Like if it four play, a four, four evolve would become six, six. Next up, Shadow. So uh, Poisoned Apple of Rebirth is going to be used kind of like Erd. Corpse Lord of Woe is just kind of like a mini, mini Mordecai. Kind of cute, you know. Dark Alice is just another mini Mordecai, but completely different. Wrecks your deck, but you could go all neutral, right? Demon Eater, eh, it's a good, 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 good enough card, right? It's like, it's like the draw card anyways. I mean, it doesn't need to be discussed too in depth. Let's just keep it going. All right, Bladed Hedgehog. Bladed, Bladed Hedgehog's just a cool dude. I like him as a two drop option. That's all I'm saying. He's got three three health stat, right? And it's like, you're gonna get self. I don't think we're talking about him too much. Cinderella. Cinderella's a cool card. Wait, was Cinderella in the sword review video? What? I didn't miss that, did I? We'll see in a bit. Council of Card Knights. Wait, what, did I not? Did I not do sword? I swear I did sword. Where'd all these cards go? Okay, we might have to redo the sword video. Let's just keep going. So, neutral. A lot of these things here, we're gonna keep it going. Some of these are obvious, like the Queen, the Snow, the Hector, Looking Glass, Alice, everything's obvious, right? Goblin Leader. Let's move in. So Hector's first one, neutral card, right? Ward. Deal three damage to an enemy if you have at least three neutral cards in your hand. This is a super key card. This is gonna be good in a lot of different crafts. Main thing is that uh, it can shoot face as well. So definitely keep a lookout for that. If you can craft it, craft it. If you get it, don't disenchant it. You know, just keep it. It's good. Into Looking Glass. Same idea that you can use it with any faction or any class, right? Neutral neutral, neutral decks will become a thing and will be usable with anything, right? There's specific in-neutral synergies with in-class cards. Like how, how Shadow will have its own version of Mordecai. And it's the only class that can do that, right? But, uh, oh, look at this card art. What is this? Into the Looking Glass. They're different people. A little bit of, little cute little shorts and some, some, some boots and stuff. Keep it going. Queen of the Dread Sea. Change the cost of neutral card, excluding Queen of the Dread Sea. Not, this, this card's just freaking broken. This is a dragon. You can put it in with Zell, Bahamut, right? Bam. Done. You're good. Game over, right? Or Genesis Dragon, Erd. Bam. Boom. It comes out. Hits you for 
14, 16 damage to the vault, stuff like that. You know? Stuff is stuff is strong. <laughs> no, white cat sage. Draw a card. Give one one to another allied follower. This is good, you know? You're gonna draw a card and give one one. Like, just drawing a card and having decent stats is pretty a-okay. Not everybody has a card draw, but you're giving one one to another allied follower. That's regardless of neutral or not, right? That's useful. That's really useful. This is this is a good enough card. It might not be the best decision. I think Hector, you know, if you're deciding between the two. But you said you can't just have more five drops than that, you know? Some some classes have like, I don't know. Luminous Mage or something, so you might not consider this. But, yeah, there's decision-making, man. If you want to go full neutral, you might play this. Femur Angelic Slacker. So, I was thinking this could be kind of cool. It's kind of meme -y. I think Wind God might be, you know, a better option or whatever, but it's it's a cool card, right? Ambush just sits there, buffs everything else, right? It's like an amulet that you can't get rid of. And then, you can send it in to help for lethal in the end. I don't think it's going to be high play at all. I just think it's a cool card to, like, mention out there. Keep a lookout for it. <clears throat> Alice Wonderland Explorer. Okay, everybody knows it's the most broken card here, right? Well, may not broken. Well designed, of course, to be strong. <laughs> Give one one to all other allied neutral followers in your hand and in play. So, if you needed to sum up the expansion, this is the card to do it, right? This is all you need to pay attention to. Neutral cards, 1-1, one, one, in hand and in play. That's crazy. And it's got, it's a 4 play point card for 3-4. That's like Belfiger computing stuff, you know? Real good. Like, some, some legendaries... They're too late in the game to make work, right? The Sneaky Snake, you can't always get him, man. But when you get him, oh, man, he wrecks people. Goblin Leader. So, Goblin Leader, your turn. I think this is really cool. You have to deal with this. It'll generate it every turn. At minimum, you have two, four stats based on the three, right? For three play points, you get two, four. One, one, and then two, two. One plus one is two. Two, two, two is four. Easy peasy. We know games, man. We play stuff. Okay, let's go. Emeralda. This is the card that I am most interested in for blood. I mean, not most interesting. I just am putting into the deck I already have rather than building a deck around it, right? Because uh, the other decks, you have to build your own control style decks or something like that, right? But um, this is this is so easily like Alucard, you know? Destroy an enemy follower amulet, gain Storm Avengers act for you. I guess Alucard has Storm regardless, but you can you can kill Bahamut with this. That's you kill Zeus with this and hit face. They think they're safe with their Zeus. No, not anymore. Emeralda. Too strong. Holy crud. Spawn of the Abyss. Okay, this is the other card I'm like most interested in for blood. Well, actually, no. They're, they're all most interested. Ambush. Whenever this follower attacks, deal 6 damage. This is amazing. You're either going to deal 6 damage, or you're going to deal 6 damage, or you're going to deal 6 damage, then deal 6 damage. Or you're going to deal 8 and deal 8. You know what I mean? It's either this card dies, you immediately deal damage, or... It hits something, deals damage, or it hits face and deals damage. So it's it's dealing damage almost no matter what, right? What I like about it, at the very least, though, is at least it only happens when it's ambush. Like, after you don't have ambush, well, it's, it's, it's gone. At least there's that. That's good. But, I mean, it's eight play points. Of course, it's going to be strong, right? It's like, um... It's like the, uh... It's like the card in Forest that kills you if it tries to hit you. You just automatically lose. It's like that, but playable. Because <laughs> that's ambush. It sits there, lurking, ready to kill. And even if it gets tribunaled or themis or Bahamuted, it, it might kill them. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, and, you know, if you play two of these, let's say you play one, they Bahamut it. You play a second one and evolve hit, that's a total of 14 damage right there. That's all I'm saying. It's huge damage. Should have zoomed in. Pause if you need to. Bam. Okay. Big Knuckle Bodyguard. Uh, we don't need to talk about this. I mean, it's just good. It's four, three, four, deals three damage. Three damage kills a lot of things. Two damage to your leader, Avenger's not active for you. I really like that. It could have just been deal two damage to your leader, but only if Avenger's not active for you. So that's useful. Caribou's Wicked Fairy. Okay, what you got for me, girl? For the remainder of this match, you will not gain a play point at the start of your turn. For the remainder of this match, draw a card and deal one damage to the enemy leader at the end of your turn. These effects will continue if this follower leaves the area. So this is, um... This is really good, really strong. I don't think it's really good on 6. I think on 7 you're able to use it. Just keep a lookout for it. It's gonna see some play. It's gonna make things really interesting and really different. I like this idea for Shadowverse. It's just so different, you know? Worm God of the Skies. This is, this is, this is, this is not necessarily broken, but it's really strong, right? 5, 6 stats for 9 is like underwhelming, but the effect means that... Forte comes out super strong. Storm OTK Dragon is existent now. Like, full full hardcore OTK, right? 
Well, maybe not full OTK, but almost full. Too strong. Tilting at windmills, right? So this could actually be of use too with that last card. Because, you know, give it storm straight on your turn, right? This says, uh, just double it, but don't give it storm. So, you're doubling it, you give it storm, then you can get a, um... Israfil, it does a bajillion damage or something like that. Yeah, that's that's a bajillion damage Israfil. I said it here first, guys. Okay, not a bajillion damage, but, you know. Israfil is 8, double that, 16. Evolve makes it 18. 18 plus the 2 damage that you naturally get from the effect, that's, that's Israfil killing. It's a hard setup, but it happens. Jabberwock! Destroy all other followers for each of the Israfil. Like I said before, this card's amazing if you set it up right. I think if you just have a bunch of two drops, no one drops at all, because one drops can turn to two drops, based on RNG, right? Then if you just have a bunch of two drops, no threes, no fours, only Sybil and higher, this card will give you so much value, right? Just Sybil, Ouroboros, everything. Imagine Ouroboros just coming onto the field, holy crud. Just a random Ouroboros coming out of nowhere on Jabberwock. And this card isn't even statted badly. Seven, seven, nine, nine, those are good stats for eight. This card's good. Strong. Elton's Assault, uh, I don't think I really need to discuss this. It can be really good. I think I'm just banking on the idea that neutral forest will give neutral give forest a potential comeback, right? I don't think it's gonna be strong though, is the thing. Forest overall. Could be wrong. Beauty and the Beast. Once again, I still don't think Forest is gonna be super strong. This is cool. It's like the hulking giant dude in uh, Dirt Rune. But I think it's harder to proc. But it's still it's still strong. It's still something that people might not be able to do anything about, right? It says damage and destruction. Maybe it survives Bahamut. So, yeah. It, it can still get hit by Bahamut with an Evolvo. Gain resistance to damage and destruction from spells and effects, not from getting hit. Fairy Driver. This card's cool. I think it's more Mimi than not. I think Cynthia and Wind God do things better. Like, I don't know. Maybe not. The, the thing is, I don't think the fairy archetype, just fairies in hand kind of thing, is huge. But maybe some uh, wolf wind bolt or wolf wolf bolt stuff will, will 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 be existent with this to be even stronger. I don't know. Fairy dragon. This card's super cool, super strong. It's like the Reaper in Shadow. You're gonna make it big off things, you know, other things, right? Other things dying, but in this case, other things fairies have been died or that have already died whole game. So you can play three of these in one turn. They could potentially be like, what, six fours, seven fours, eight fours? I'm going to say they're going to be at least four fours at end game. You know? Four fours for, for two play. That's, that, that, that's momentum swinging right there. So, seems good, man. It's like getting the snakes out for, uh, for Bloodcraft if you got three of them in hand, you know? And they're huge, but it, it's not that. Slightly definite, but let's keep it going. All right, Flower Princess. I think this card is really interesting. Getting the Thorn Burst is nice. It reminds me of uh, Levi, but just it's it's overall just really interesting. I think it's a very fair, balanced-ish card, right? It doesn't look super broken. Maybe I'm wrong, but I like it. I just wanted to point it out. Nice Red Branch Knight. So I like this card. Havencraft has so much now in terms of utility, right? Until the start of your next turn, your leader cannot receive more than three damage at a time. This is like, yo, Dragoncraft. I don't like you. I'm gonna stay alive, and I have perfectly fine stats. Two, two, two play points for two, two. Seems good, man. Odette. Uh, I think Odette and Odell are both interesting. I think they're cards you should keep a lookout for. I don't know if they're for a fact good. Don't craft them, but if you get them, man, keep an eye out for it. Eagle Man. Eagle Man probably is really freaking good. It's just, it's, it's gotta be, right? It's basically Daria stuff, but with neutral, just for Haven. This is a really cool archetype. If you are on a budget and you need to build a deck, probably neutral Haven might be a good way to go because of Eagle Man and the other card, Lion of the Golden City. I mean, Lion of the Golden City is legendary, right? But you can get by without crafting this probably with this other neutral stuff that you just happen to get, you know, Angel of the Word and stuff, shooting things, Hector shooting stuff, right? Golds aren't so bad, yeah? And I mean, e Eagle Man Silver. So, okay, Princess Snow White. Um, this card seems just good. I don't know if it's great. It's weak to other havens just banishing it, right? But it's for two play points, you get a one, two, and a two, three potentially. So that's like three, four stats for two play points. Seems good, man. March Hare's Tea Time. Summon a tin soldier. Tin soldiers are something to look out for. The fact that you get two of them on four play points, the first one comes out. It's like 
reasonably okay stat. It seems a little slow, but it could be what you need for lethal, just with an evolve or something like that. Into Looking Glass, this is the uh, epitome of neutral stuff, right? Alice and this. Draw a card, change all cards in your hand, and then play the cost of waypoints for less than neutral cards. That's some... That's a combo right there, just by itself. But, you know, you draw a card with it too. Could be used with spells and all that. Spell boosting. And it just keeps your hand strong. Seems good, man. It's super scary how out of control this can get, though. I don't know how out of control, but we'll see. People are going to play it. We have the Dread Sea. Did I not start on this? Whatever. Change the cost of a neutral card. Excluding Dream of the new. So, like I said, Bahamut plus... Bahamut plus, uh... Zell. Or... Genesis Dragon Erd. Did I not already go over this? Huh. That might have been a duplicate. I don't know. Don't think we did Wizard of Oz, though. Draw a card until five cards in your hand. Change the cost of spells without spell boosting your hand to one. This is really cool. I like the idea of this because of running a non-spell runecraft. Non-spell boost, at least. You run Mutagenic Bolts or something like that. Maybe some Dance of Deaths or something. And this is, like, super crazy, right? You're just drawing cards and then just banishing other spells that you won't be using anyways, right? Because you're going to be a neutral rune, which is so funny. I don't know. No spell rune? That's so weird. Abomination Awaken. Talked about this a bit. The number of cards in your hand increases to 9 during your turn. Evolve this follower and deal 3. So you can think of this as... It's like the uh, chained Bloodcraft card at 4-4, four, four, right? For 3 play points. Where it does nothing in the beginning. And they worry about it, so they have to hit it. And then, if you evolve it, you can hit them in the face for 6. So they're going to worry about it. The other thing is that... Um, Stat-wise... It's like a 3 play point 4-4, four, four, right? At 4-4, four, four, when you evolve it, it becomes 6-6. Six, six. So it's very similar to that 3 play point uh, blood, Bloodcraft Follower with 4-4 four, four stats. Just saying. You know? Golem Assault. Put a Conjure Guardian into your hand. Enhance 6, 2 more into your hand, Earth Rites, Track 1 cost. So this is really flexible. You can use it with either Enhance or non enhance, And you can use it with Earth Rite or no Earth Rite, right? I think this is really usable for Earth Rite, and I hope that Earth Rite Dirt Rune, you know, becomes a thing. But I don't know, man. I just think more options is more fun. So, we'll see. Don't get rid of it if you got it, though. Unless you really... I mean, if, if you're starting out, you can get rid of it. Because Dirt Rune probably isn't going to be the strongest anyways. But I think Dirt Rune is actually really considerable. Especially with the, um, the Petrifies and all that. And the... Uh, just the Banish potential. Okay, Carbuncle. Last word. Spell boost the cards in your hand. Seems good, man. So, the difference between this and having a spell is that you can use draw cards first that would draw something. And draw cards typically don't get spell boosted other than the one at five play points, right? So, like, let's say you, you uh, shoot something, the two play point shoot, you shoot something for, for one damage ping, and you draw a card. Well, you want that other card to get spell boosted. Then you attack with Carbuncle after you use all your draws so that you make sure you have your spell boost in hand first before you have this die. If you can help it. Otherwise, they're going to kill it, and it's basically you spell boosting anyways. The problem is that uh, the Blade Mage, or Quick Blade Mage, whatever his name is, that comes out with Storm, he'll have trouble with this, so this might not be best with some archetypes. But it's a good option. I like the idea. I think it's good design. All right, Heinlein. Dark Mage Expert 6, Blade 1, 5, 6, Ward, Fanfare. Spell boost all cards in your hand. That is below spell boost 5, 5. Okay, so basically, it's got good stats, and... If something isn't spell boosted, boost it to 5. If it is past 5, then you don't got to worry about it most likely anyways. This card's probably pretty good. You can see it boosting up Daria or, you know, just boosting up a bunch of other things, right? It's just, it's, it's got good stats. It helps out. It's silver. Everybody's going to try it out at the very least. Corpse Sword of Woe. Did I not already go over him? This is mini Mordecai, but he can be dealt with if you kill him before he's evolved. This is good card design, in my opinion. It makes sense that, you know... Because Mord Mordecai can't be dealt with for some, some classes, right? You just got to kill them or you die when it comes out after a turn or two. And then uh, Mordecai is basically Aegis. <laughs> Except for it's got an answer-ish. Aegis is just worse. You know, it's just so much stronger. <laughs> but okay. Corpse Lord of Woe. That might be triggering for some people, but uh, just deal with it, man. This is good card design, right? This is answerable. It's got some things, right? It's going to come back, but it's going to come back unevolved so you can deal with it. Uh, the only thing that makes it, like, iffy is just that when you evolve it, it's still a 4-4, but I think it's good. Dark Alice. This is, um, this is a, like, deck-defining deck. It's gonna define its own archetype, right? Banish all allied Shadowcraft cards in play and summon a Dark Alice. So this is another mini Mordecai, or it is Mordecai, 5-5 five, five stats, right? 
but you can lose all your Shadowcraft cards in hand, right? Or in your deck, too. And what if you run out of cards because of this and lose from overdrawing, yeah? That could be an issue, so you might run a full neutral deck. That seems a little bit iffy at times, too, for you to do that, but I don't know. It's not the worst in the world. This is definitely going to see play, though. It's probably really strong, though. It's just... It makes you think about how you want to build your deck, and I think that's good for Shalvers to think about it, you know, rather than just being like, oh, what are all the most overpowered things I can just throw in here? Just throw it in there. Bam. Done. Poison Apple. I said this is like Erd. I, I really think this is cool. I think it's good card design too. Basically, you give it the neutral tag, and then you resummon it after it dies as the regular, regular follower. That's cool. It's like an Erd, but you don't auto proc it, and that, I don't know. Erd makes some crazy things happen and then this is just a slower herd which is nice to slow it down rather than just go full crazy all the time yeah Maisie red riding hood okay destroy an enemy follower if an allied neutral follower is in play this is a swordcraft card i think we missed this in the swordcraft video but uh we'll see here destroy an enemy follower if an allied neutral follower is in play so if you evolve this it's basically lyrial but guaranteed kill something right that's what makes me think it's super strong i think this is good it's got to be good right like, it's unlike, um, okay, comparable drops are Lyrial, which has 4 4 stats, shoots for 1. That 1 ping does kill things at times. And, uh, Soul Squasher, right? Soul Squasher kills evolved things, but you need a Necromancy. I think this is really good. The only thing is that Albert wants these evolves, but this should be fine. This is like almost a priest, right? In terms of value. You don't banish, but you kill things. Crazy good. Oh, play Hedgehog, my dude. Whenever I just want to game one. Oh, that's the dude right there, man. He's just going to get bigger and bigger. I think he's really good because he's got three health. That's the main thing. And, I mean, you're probably going to kill stuff. If you don't kill stuff, well, it's like still four four stat points total, right? Instead of two, two, you got one plus three. All right, White Ridge Sword Sw Swordsman. We missed this in the sword video, too. And so I'm going to mention it here. Uh, Bane Sword. Bane Ward, right? So, that seems like whatever, 3-4 Bane Ward, but when you evolve it, whenever this follower attacks an enemy, destroy the enemy follower before it can deal any damage in return. That's really good. Because here's the thing, it's 4-5 with Ward, it's going to kill something that fights it, and if, um, if it fights something, holy crud, man, after the evolve, you get that value and it can fight something else, or blah. It can fight something and maybe live another turn to fight something else. Maybe you give it Ambush. I think Ambush is going to make a uh, a Resurgence. I don't know if it was ever popular, so I can say Resurgence, but you know, it's going to it's gonna, it's gonna come into the game a bit more, right? And so, this card looks super interesting, super possibly good. Reminds me of the card we were just looking at, right? The uh, Maisie Red Riding Hood. So there's like three of these cards that are like, oh, when you evolve, you can kill something in Sword now. But I think this one's the most considerable or not this one's the most considerable this one's the most considerable but this one's the most threatening looking it's just that it, it's at the same point as luminous mage and i think luminous mage is just too too good too good right okay council of card knight so what happened in the sword video is i guess i cut these i cut these uh these cards into a different folder rather than copying pasting them so i'm in a club soldier heart guardian and spade raider this is similar to Alwida's Command in that it's a spell and it summons followers, right? So you got a 1-3, a 1-3, a 1-3. One has Storm, one has Bane, one has Ward. I think it's really good. It covers a lot of bases. Bane means you can evolve it, hit something, kill anything for sure. Storm means you can evolve, hit for lethal. Ward means you're protecting yourself while potentially Bane hitting something else, you know? And the, the evolved Bane, it can probably kill something significant, right? 3-5 stats, you know, it's survive some, and you'll probably... You can use the storm to hit one thing, like a fairy, or some that's been damaged already. So a club soldier can kill something, spade raider can evolve kill something, heart guardian just stays there and protects you, right? So it's like you clear two things on board potentially, and you're just sitting there with good ward. I don't know if it's super strong, but it's like, it's definitely considerable. Cinderella, okay. This is the last card that was uh, forgotten in the other one. Whenever another allied swordcraft follower comes into play, return this follower to your hand. Whenever another allied swordcraft follower comes into play, return this one. Okay, so same effect evolved or not, right? This is 4-4 four, four stats, which is why I think it's really good. The effect is interesting. You can return it to your hand, like how you would ancient elf another ancient elf to make it go back to your hand, and it would, you know, kind of semi-heal it in a sense. Hit face, return to hand, do whatever, right? Seems good. 
I like it. I don't know if it's broken necessarily, but the stats are really good, right? Just come in, if it just comes out on curve, they, they have to deal with it or they take face damage, right? That's why it's really good. And if they only partially deal with it, bring it back to your hand. Say, okay, seems good. Hmm, it's commander. Okay, if it were an officer, you could utilize the uh, the storm commander, the, the one that gives officers storm, but ah, can't have it all, right? <laughs> Alright guys, and that's the video. I'll probably be going back to the sword video and doing a uh, 1.5 on that. So, uh, thanks for checking it out, guys. I'll put links to the imagers, you know, the images that you'll see here. Things will be moved around and stuff. Check out the, the whole playlist if you want to. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys appreciate it, you know. It took a while to make, and I don't know if I'll be making any more of these because they're super long. I have the template set up to be making these, and if I had more time, would have got rid of the black background on it. I made it on Illustrator instead of Photoshop, so I, I, I don't like the idea of taking... It takes... After you do some masking and all this stuff, it's more work than it's worth. But, uh, yeah, check me out at twitch.tv just quasi pro, and, uh, look, chat in the comments. I'll be there if you got any questions and stuff, man. I just about hit Masters, so... As in, I'm in Masters Trouser. Let's just say I'm in Masters. I'm in Masters now. Ain't no going back after that, right? I said it, it's happened, it's done. If it's not done by tomorrow or something, I'm a liar. Bam, end of the video here, guys. Uh, reminder, blood did not have this image in it. And sword, uh, sword is lacking the strong cards, which is ironically very sad. All right, bye.